Welcome to ADSR Pro with me, Mike Smith. Today I'm going to uh, give you a quick tutorial on recording audio from external devices, uh, including sound modules, samplers, synthesizers, etc. Um, so what I've done is I've created a MIDI MIDI track and imported a MIDI file. Um, and what we're going to do now with this MIDI file is trigger external devices. I've obviously previously set up my MIDI which is in one of my other tutorials so if you want to check that out in case you're unsure um, so basically on the MIDI channel now my input and output is not connected to anything we don't need an input because we've already got the MIDI file there output I'm going to uh, route to the access virus and if we press play <laughs> So there you go, you can hear the virus play in there. Um, what we need to do now is uh, create an audio channel. And what we're going to do is um, determine where our signal is coming in from. So if you just have a, a stereo in and stereo out sound card, all your external devices would be coming in via stereo in number one. Um, because that's the only input you've got, that's the only one that will show. Uh, me on the other hand, I'm using the 808 Mark III, so I have uh, four stereo pairs <coughs> inputs, or eight mono inputs. Uh, now I know all my external devices are coming in via channel five and six. That's because I route all my, my external devices through a mixer, and my output out of the mixer comes into my sound card on channel five and six. So if I press F4 and open up the VST connections, you can see here I only have stereo in one and two. What I need to do is add bus. I'm going to create stereo channels and I'm going to create two. Click OK and automatically it wires it up so stereo two is coming in on three and four. Stereo three is coming in on five and six. Now this is the one we want. So if we press F3 and open up the mixer, here you can see these are our stereo inputs that we've now created. Stereo one and two stereo 3 and 4, stereo 5 and 6. So if I press play there you go you can see our virus now coming in on stereo 3 and 4. So on our audio track it says it's coming in from stereo in 1 and 2 well, we actually want it to come in from stereo three. That's five and six. So now, if I press record, There we go, there's there's our audio input recorded direct from our external device. So <clears throat> what we could do now would be to create another audio track. Um, we shall mute this one for now. And on our MIDI track, let's move this one out of the way. On our MIDI track, as opposed to going to the virus, we could select another device. So let's try the Orbit 9090. And let's record that in as well. That was my fault. Make sure the audio track is record enabled and selected. Again, my fault. Make sure the stereo input is from stereo 3. We all make mistakes, we're only human. And there we go, there's our audio. So now if we solo those two. And 
and there you go you can see there's our audio tracks uh, layered together playing the same same notes just different sounds uh, good way of layering sounds up creating unique sounds <clears throat> And that's pretty much it with regards to uh, recording audio from external devices. Um, it can be as easy or as hard as you like. Again, with regards to my template, which is another Cubase tutorial that I have done, um, I like to have a couple of audio tracks already there assigned to my inputs on my sound card so I don't have to create stuff all the time. I can just record straight in. Um, so in my in my my project I might create a couple of audio tracks um, and they're already going to be record enabled from stereo 3 so we'll call this sound card ins you know and same on that one and then we've already got audio tracks pretty much record enabled ready to go straight away Again, just to save time, you know, obviously if, you, if you're messing about with a preset and you've got this really nice sound, you know, and uh, you're ready to just record it in, then great, bang, straight in. Another good thing we can do, again, which I've shown you in a previous tutorial with regards to the MIDI, would be to duplicate the track. Let's delete that. Filter cut off. I previously mentioned I have a little bit of... Um, fun with my access virus uh, with regards to uh, MIDI so I'm going to make sure that it's not actually sending the CD, MIDI signal back out I'm uh, recording MIDI information from all MIDI inputs let's just try this see if this works in fact let's stop because that needs to be set to my virus there we go So now if I move a, a, a rotary knob on the virus, you can see there's MIDI information there. So what I'm going to do is record MIDI information from the filter cutoff. So there we go, it's actually recorded the MIDI notes coming back out as well, which we don't want. Let's just delete all those. So now there, that's the filter cut off, and it's on controller number 40. So there you go. The reason I knew that is because there's a little asterisk next to there which tells me uh, what the MIDI information is recorded in. So now, disconnect that and send the output back to the virus now in theory that should now control the filter cutoff on the virus if I press play so there you go it, you know again I, I like to do this uh, mainly because I've got a visual representation of what it does um, I know this is going to be filter cut off for the virus I could also do every parameter now your user manual should in theory give you all the controller numbers of your hardware synth however that's one way even if you don't know the controller numbers or you can't find the manual this is a quick way of just getting your MIDI information in there to make sure that your sound is doing exactly what you want it to do so that's pretty much it if you've got any uh, questions, please feel free to drop me a line and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And also, don't forget, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye-bye.